Okay, so uh, MPI-3, as I said, came out two years ago, September 2012, and it had a bunch of uh, major new features, some of which we saw today, and um, a, a whole bunch of smaller uh, features. So the new, major new features was non-blocking collectives, which we saw this morning, neighborhood collectives that Bill just talked about, improved one-sided communication interface that you know, Bill covered most of the new improvements. So MPI, uh, the, the one-sided was an MPI-2 itself, which was uh, uh, defined in 1997, but there were lots of additions and enhancements to, uh, to it in MPI-3. There's a new interface for tools, uh, which, I'll, which I'll talk about. There are new Fortran bindings, and there are a whole bunch of smaller uh, things. Uh, one thing is that the C++ bindings uh, have, been, have been removed in MPI-3. They were deprecated earlier in 2.2. In but you can still use MPI from C++. You, you can use the C bindings from C++. And the reason these were removed was nobody was really using them, and they were not really in the style that, that the C++ programmers wanted, so it, they ended up being uh, removed. And there are some uh, other functions that were earlier deprecated, and they have now been removed. These are, these are functions that had some problems with some parameters not being of the right size, particularly in the Fortran binding and so forth. So they were, there are newer functions to replace the functions that were, uh, that were removed. So I won't talk about non-blocking collectives. We talked about it. Neighborhood collectives we just covered. Uh, so the improved uh, RMA uh, interface, then, then uh, the changes were that there were some new functions for creating windows, the win allocate. Uh, the win create dynamic and the win allocate shared, which allows you to to create a shared memory within a node and just just access it using uh, loads and stores. Uh, there were new atomic read modify write operations where you can do a get and an accumulate, so you you can do a read and uh, uh, like a fetch and increment type of thing uh, atomically, which was missing in MPI two. Uh, so that that's the fetch and op and get accumulate. So if, Fetch and off is a simplified version of get accumulate. Get accumulate is, a, is the most general. There's also a compare and swap that uh, Bill, Bill talked about. And there's something, uh, some changes in the memory model, not changes, but uh, there's a new uh, unified me memory model that makes things a little simpler. Uh, I, I won't go into the details of that because that uh, itself can take some uh, time. And there are uh, new versions of put, get, and accumulate that request that return an MPI request object that you can test and uh, wait on. Uh, there is a whole new uh, interface uh, uh, for tools. Uh, so this is to al uh, allow tools to get access to some internal features uh, of an MPI implementation in a portable way. For example, if you want to know the sizes of some message queues uh, that while your application is running, if it's getting a lot of unexpected messages. Unexpected messages are messages that have arrived for which the receive has not been posted yet. And in some application, because of the way the communication happens, it, this, it's often, it can happen that there are a whole bunch of uh, unexpected messages, and the, receive, the, the, the queue becomes quite long. So there are ways to, to find out these things, and it's, it's more useful for tool developers. And there's a whole community of tool developers who participated in the definition of that. Uh, there are new bindings for Fortran 2008. So if some of you are Fortran users, uh, Fortran 2008 is the new version of Fortran. So these are in the, in the style of Fortran 2008. So they, they provide better uh, quality argument checking, for example. An MPI data type was an integer in, in the previous Fortran. Here it is, a, uh, an object, it is something that is uh, in a specific and that the compiler can check if you pass the wrong argument, similar to C, and a whole bunch of other uh, features uh, that makes the Fortran version more modern. Uh, and there are some miscellaneous features. So uh, there is a new type of probe uh, called um, uh, mprobe. Uh, that, so MPI has this function called probe that I don't know if you, uh, if you are aware of it. So if you don't know if you're if you are going to get a message, you can call MPI probe to see if there is an incoming message, and then you call a receive. Uh, the problem with that is in a multi-threaded case, there can be a, ra a race condition. That is, some other thread could call the receive, and then if, you call the, if the other thread again called the receive, then there, there would be no message. So this, the matched probe and receive, the matched probe re returns a handle that this M receive, the new kind of receive, you, you pass that handle to so that there isn't a race condition. 
there is a way to create new communicators in a non-collective way. Again, some, some users wanted that. Uh, the C bindings have been made const correct. And what that means is uh, there is this notion of const uh, in C. And uh, some of the parameters to the C functions were not properly declared as const. So it, it, it's not, I mean, it, it's just to make it uh, better. And uh, you know, it, that's the right way to define the bindings. So that should have been done earlier itself. It has been done now. Uh, and a whole bunch of smaller things which you know, don't need to worry about unless you actually need that function. And as I said, the C++ bindings removed, but you can use the C bindings from C++ and a bunch of functions that were deprecated have been removed. Uh, what did not make it into MPI3? So one thing that did not make it is, uh, is any additional support for fault tolerance or or resilience. So there was there was a fault tolerance working group that was looking at adding some new features to MPI to make it more fault tolerant. It's not that MPI is not fault tolerant because all functions return error codes and and you you know you can look at the error code and, and, and do something after that. But there, there, you know for for more than that, uh, what happened was the the group did not converge on a single proposal. There were competing proposals all the way to the end. So. We could not delay MPI3 indefinitely until that uh, converged. But that group is still active, and, and hopefully in the next major version of MPI, there will be some fault tolerance uh, support. And that, that'll be uh, MPI4, whenever that happens, maybe another year or two. Uh, th there was also a, a, a group looking at uh, better support for hybrid programming. In particular, there was a proposal to extend uh, um, MPI to have this notion of multiple communication end endpoints per rank. So right now, uh, an MPI process has a single rank, and if there are multiple threads in that process, they all share that same rank. So if they're all calling MPI receive, they're all calling receive on that one rank. So internally, there is, there, there is a single receive queue, and, and there is some serialized, thread serialization that happens uh, when accessing that queue. So to avoid that problem, uh, the proposal was to extend MPI to add multiple endpoints per process, so a thread could have its own endpoint, like a rank, that could be used to, to send and receive. So that, that work is still going on, and there is a hybrid, pro hybrid programming working group, and something like that might uh, happen in, in the next major uh, MPI release. Uh, the, the most, uh, what is expected to happen is an MPI 3.1 uh, probably by this December, that will have smaller fixes or you know there are some errata type stuff, uh, bug fixes to MPI three, and an MPI four will happen sometime later. Uh, you can follow all this if you like. There, it's all public. There is a website, uh, uh, meetings.mpi forum. There are working groups. You can look at their wikis. You can join their mailing lists. You can even come to the MPI forum meetings. It's it's open to everybody. Uh, and as I had said earlier, you can download the MPI standard itself uh, at this website. Uh, so any final questions before we adjourn? Yeah? So what's the best like, strategy to do with fault tolerance like, before the MPI has such implementations? So right now I can be able to save all the current states into the disk. And then if we see hardware failure, just restart with the... Yeah, checkpointing is good. Uh, uh, checking the error codes from your application is good. And by, by default, uh, MPI, so MPI has this notion of uh, error handler. You know? So each function has an error handler associated with it. By default, uh, the, the, uh, the default error handler is to abort on error. And that's why you find that the MPI the program will, will terminate if there is an error. There is a way to change that by setting the MP, MPI com set error, error handler. You can set it to errors return, and there, the MPI implementation will try to, as long as it's not a fatal error, it will try to stay alive and, and return an error code. So you can look at the error code, and you know, there's an error, MPI error class, error string, there are the functions to see what happened. And then, then it's up to you to see what, what can be done at that point you know, based on that error. Was it a user error, or was there a system error, or, or what? But checkpointing is, is definitely a good thing. Yeah. What, what about intentionally causing errors to sort of hack killing a, a process that, that becomes non-responsive? I mean, because you can never get a rank back, right? Like if I kill it, I, I, I want MPI to be able to kill a non-responsive process if it takes too long. 
but. Yeah, so I think for that you need the MPI, the, the new fault tolerance stuff, because that defines uh, how MPI will behave when if one process dies, how do you recover the communicators? How can you exclude just that and, and have a, a new communicator with the remaining ranks and continue to do collectives? So what happens in, this, in that case today is now COM world is missing one rank. So what does a collective mean on COM world? You know, that rank doesn't exist. So that's not properly defined. So in the new fault tolerance stuff, all that is going to be uh, specified. The how do you deal with that case? 